Welcome to static cardiology station number two. The instructions are listed below. As a reminder, you will have six minutes to interpret four rhythms and treat those patients that are associated with it. Mark is going to run us through those stations now. Welcome to static cardiology station number two. Take a moment to write down any notes that you would like to use during this station. Do you have any questions before we begin? I do not. Okay, then let's begin. You are a paramedic with an urban EMS system. You and your partner respond with a four-person engine company to the following patient. A 33-year-old female that states her heart feels like it is beating out of my chest. She states that she, she does not have chest pain, she just feels like it's going too fast. Vitals are as follows. The pulse matches the monitor, blood pressure 110 over 80, respiration 36 with clear and equal lung sounds, pulse ox is 100% on room air. She states she has no medical history that she knows of, does not take any medications, and has no known medical allergies. BSI seen safe throughout. My rhythm is SVT. I'm gonna first check my patient's ABCs, make sure she has an adequate airway, she's breathing well, she has GERD circulation. I'm gonna place her on the monitor and obtain a 12 lead. I'm going to obtain IV access and keep it at a rate of TKO. I'm going to have oxygen available to keep her SpO2 between 94 and 99%. I'm gonna place the pads on her in case her condition deteriorates. Because she's stable, we're gonna start with vagal maneuvers followed by pharmacology, adenosine, six milligrams, rapid IV push, followed by a flush. Second dose, 12 milligrams of adenosine, rapid IV push, followed by a flush. I'm gonna transport her to the hospital and reassess en route. You are a paramedic with an urban EMS system. You and your partner respond with a four-person engine company to the following patient. A 72-year-old male patient has been dizzy and nauseous for the past 24 hours. He states that he feels worse if he is not lying in bed. Vital order follows. Pulse matches the monitor, blood pressure 100 over 60, respirations 22, clear equal bilaterally. Pulse ox 94% on room air. Skin is pale, warm, and clammy. He has a history of a leaking aortic valve. He does not take any medications and has no known medical allergies. My patient's rhythm is sinus bradycardia with a second degree type two heart block. DSI seen safe throughout. I'm going to first check my patient's ABCs, make sure they have a good airway, are breathing adequately, and have good circulation. I'm gonna obtain IV access and keep it at a rate of TKO. I'm going to make sure the patient has oxygen levels between 94 and 99% and give supplemental oxygen if needed. I'm going to place the pads on this particular patient in case, in case their condition deteriorates. I'm going to uh, transport that patient to the monitor, to the hospital and monitor throughout. You are a paramedic with an urban EMS system. You and your partner respond to a four, with a four person engine company to the following patient. A 49 year old female that fell and struck her head while running a marathon. She is unconscious and unresponsive on arrival. You cannot find a pulse and she is not breathing. She is wearing a bracelet that identifies her as a diabetic. BSI scene safety throughout. My rhythm is a second degree type two heart block condition PA. So I'm going to run a code. I'm gonna begin CPR immediately and continue that throughout. I'm going to put pads on the patient in case we have a shockable rhythm at any time during the code. I'm gonna attain IV or IV IO access and immediately draw up one milligram of epinephrine, one to 10,000, and push it rapidly as soon as it's available. And I'm gonna push it again every three to five minutes. I'm gonna check my patient's status every two minutes. I'm going to consider H's and T's. Because this patient is a diabetic, I'm also gonna make sure and get a sugar right away. So I'm gonna look for things like hypoglycemia, um, hypothermia, hypoxia, I'm gonna place a high flow two to deal with that. I'm also gonna look at things like attention pneumothorax and toxins. Um, I'm gonna place an advanced airway and we're going to continue to work the code until something changes. 
You are a paramedic with an urban EMS system. You and your partner respond with a four-person engine company to the following patient. 54-year-old female with non-radiating substernal chest pain. The pain increases with respiration and the patient has a history of angina. She took one nitro prior to your arrival with relief, taking the pain from 8 out of 10 to 6 out of 10. Skin is pink, warm, and dry. Vitals, blood pressure 122 over 68, pulse 78, respirations 18 and clear. My patient takes nitro, Plavix, Paxil, and Zocar. She's allergic to coding. BSI seems safe throughout. My rhythm is a sinus rhythm. Okay. So I'm going to follow Mona for this particular patient. I'm going to begin with making sure that she has good ABCs, adequate airway, breathing well, good circulation. Um, I'm going to place my patient on the monitor and I'm going to obtain a 12 lead. I'm going to uh, obtain IV access. I'm going to place her on high flow O2. I'm going to give her 324 milligrams of aspirin and tell her to chew it up immediately. I'm going to give her additional nitro so long as her blood pressure stays at an adequate level. If the pain does not improve with the aspirin and nitro, I'm going to give her morphine. I'm going to uh, reassess en route to see if there's anything that changes and uh, transport to the hospital. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add or change? No. Okay guys, so let's do a couple of reflections on car uh, static cardiology station number two. So first thing, when I was actually going through this process, one of the things I really struggled to remember was one of the easiest things to do in static, which is BSI scene safe. So when you're getting your own setup ready to go for this station, figure out a place where you can place BSI scene safe so you always remember to stay it. And where I try and remember to do that is right after I read the narrative. So I'll finish the narrative and I'll say BSI scene safe throughout. In static, you actually have a blank piece of paper and a pencil. That's a really smart place to write down something that you might easily forget, like BSI scene safe. Or it's also a place where you can write down um, a particular order that you might want to follow if that's going to be helpful to you. The other thing I wanted to talk about was with the first strip that I did, which was a chest pain strip. So when you look at the narrative on that particular strip, you'll see that the patient actually has pretty good vitals. And you'll also notice that the rhythm is a sinus rhythm, but I was thinking possible MI. So a couple things to remember about that. First, you've got to do a 12 lead to understand whether your patient's having an MI at all, and if so, what type. And second, I use the acronym MONA, which remember is morphine, oxygen, nitro, and aspirin. But I didn't give them in that particular order because I actually administer them in the order in which I thought was gonna make the most sense for the patient. So when we're talking about MONA, oxygen and aspirin have minimal risks associated with them when given to the patient, especially when they have chest pain, right? The oxygen is gonna help um, deal with any hypoperfusion issues, and aspirin is going to help prevent clot formation and improve blood flow. Now, nitro and morphine are both beneficial, but they have greater risk, and so we need to do a couple things first, and that is get a good blood pressure to make sure that their blood pressure is adequate, because remember, both nitro and morphine are vasodilators, and they can compound each other's effects. And so you just have to be a little more cautious of giving both of them. So you might be asking yourself the question, are there cases where I can give vasodilators without obtaining a 12 lead? There are definitely cases where you may give vasodilators without obtaining a 12 lead, but remember, you've gotta be sure about that person's blood pressure, both before the initial and checking before any subsequent doses. So that's just a couple of reflections on station number two.